And now it's time to flirt with scariness, the unknown. No matter how identical the buildings are in an area like this, behind every door, behind every curtain, behind every window lurks the chaos factor, and that is you. It's time to talk about personality. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say that surely there are no rules to personality because we're all different. Wrong. That is the first rule. Personality fits into very clearly defined types. No matter how similar or different our homes, we'll always conspire to take our own peculiarly individual approach. Take this, for example, two identical houses, but each with their own individual personality. Take here, for example. Now, just what sort of personality lives in this space? It's actually a very, very nice feeling of order in here, but not the kind of order that makes the space empty, because you've got a lot going on. The pictures, particularly, very eye-catching, very colourful. Um, but they're contained, and it's this feeling of personality being exuberant, but at the same time contained. In fact, the whole thing feels terribly grown up, terribly controlled. There are little touches of femininity and almost childlike naivety with the little shrine made of the television and the little shell chandelier. But these are small statements in a space that is largely controlled, serene and tranquil. Well, I suppose I like a certain sense of order and things to be quite simple and a calm environment, definitely a feeling of calm. And I think sometimes clutter makes you feel more sort of wound up. Say if you've had a busy day outside, you come in, you just want it to be really simple and easy to look after. Um, it's funny because I thought when I moved here that I'd want to have some colour down here, but I just, more and more, I just said, no, it just seemed right to keep it white and simple. And I think any colour closes a room, even if it's a sort of light, pale colour, I just think it brings it in more. So I just wanted to keep it as spacious as possible. Cool and a great use of space. This is Oroco Housing Cooperative, affordable housing on the South Bank. And when the architects sat down to design the scheme, obviously they wanted to maximise light, increase the feeling of space. But when they were at their drawing board, I bet they'd never anticipated this. In this room, it just seems so inappropriate to use sentences. You just want to make a list of words like eclectic and organic and easygoing. It's a magpie's nest. And it's glittery things that have caught the occupier's eye. And it's just all put together without any kind of control, without any kind of underpinning, without any pretense at order. It's affable, it's friendly, it's a nightmare to find anything. But you feel you know the people that live here very well. They're going to talk about anything under the sun, everything under the sun, probably at the same time. I mean, when I first moved into my, my very first flat, it was wonderfully minimal. Table, vase, twigs, you know, sort of a very trendy parrot in the corner. I was like, it was all reflective of trends and not who, really who I was. What I wanted and I liked to live in 
uh, to create a sort of peaceful atmosphere, but that was also about me wanting to create some kind of impression. At that time, it was on girls, obviously. Uh, but now, this, is, this reflects a life, and so much has gone on that, it, uh, yes, then I would have felt this, is, this would be cluttered, but now I just love it, because everywhere I look, there's something that pops out at me, and I like that. We're both creatures of theatre, we both work in theatre. Lizzie, my wife, loves that whole sort of bordello feel, the slight, just slightly seedy, and so we thought, well, with gold walls and red carpets. I think photographic history we like as well, and paintings, and Lizzie likes a lot of scarves and materials. She's very into materials. And so, yeah, it, it does, it's a real reflection of both of us. See what I mean? Same flat, but a completely different take on taste. It comes down to personalising your background, making it a mirror to reflect your personality. Sure, a good interior designer can do it for you, but actually it's so much better if you do it for yourself. All you need to do is work out what you want. One of the most exciting things about my job in particular is going in and working out what people's personalities are like and what kind of style they might like. And I pick that up from um, what mugs they've got, if they've got little cuddly animals on the mugs, um, or whether they've got just stripy mugs or plain mugs. And I always ask them whether they chose the mugs or whether somebody gave them to them. Um, and their response will tell you such a lot, because if they say, oh, I love those mugs, I got those in, you know they love cuddly things. Um, they'll want lots of um, detail in their interior design. Um, hairstyles, you can tell a lot from hairstyles. They've got a terribly neat hairstyle. Adventurous hairstyle will tell you that they'll um, happy to experiment with their interiors and have fun with it as well. Clothing's a really good giveaway. It will tell you an awful lot about them, whether they follow fashions very strictly, which means they're likely to change their interiors quite a lot, um, or whether they um, have an individual style that will show you that they'll have quite an eclectic mix of stuff in their home. Um, lots and lots of things, give it away. So you see, we're all the same. Our houses are littered with hints and tips and clues sharing with the world what we like and what we don't like, from the cups we drink out of, to our egg cups, our colour choice, the books we might leave casually lying around for all to see. All of these things express personality. But, over to the guinea pig house. What personality is there to be uncovered? Actually, I really hope there is a personality there to be uncovered. Of course there is. Now, if you've been watching this series, you'll know that in every show we apply the rules of colour, lighting and pattern, or, say in this case, personality, to one space. In this room, it's personality that seems to be lacking, which is a bit of a task, really. Welcome to a room without personality. A blank canvas, an interior decorator's dream, and a psychologist's nightmare. Broadly speaking, there are only a handful of personality types, but more of that later. To find a personality for this room, I'm going to have to turn private detective. Where to start? Where to start? Oh, bedroom. Bedroom. Come. Now. Oh, there's no one in here. Good. Something about people's bedrooms. If they're quite contained, if they're quite kind of reserved downstairs in the bedroom, they completely let their personality out. And in here, I'm saying that, OK, there's a lot of coordination. There's uh, a lot of tidiness, a lot of restraint, a lot of self-control. I mean, look at the colour scheme. The walls, the bed linen, the floor, the rug, the curtains, even the art matches almost exactly and in fact the art is very interesting very graphic very linear although of a romantic subject and there is an element of romance in here the country pine bedhead the rustic painted floorboards and the curtains so in personality terms we're looking at someone who's quite graphic who's quite restrained who's quite in charge but with a little bit of romanticism so that'll be Graphic romanticism or romantic graphicism? You decide. Behind every door is a personality fitting into a set of types. Those who want order. Those who can cope with clutter. The confident and hard-hearted. The conscientious and the creative. I mean, yes, of course I realise that 
we're all completely different. But there are similarities in our differences. And I think those similarities lead to a short list of about five or six basic fundamental personality types. But that's only a short list. Because actually, right at the top of the tree are two fundamental mindsets. And that's light and dark, introvert or extrovert. The, the extroverted personality type is, is outgoing, sociable, and it's linked also to thrill-seeking. And that risk-taking element uh, can be found also in perhaps what they do with their home. So they, they may be inclined to, to try bold and exciting colour schemes. They like to have lots of things around them. They, it's, it's associated to some extent with finding clutter, not necessarily ordered clutter, but just a lot of things to look at, a lot of things creating stimulation in the environment around them. The introvert is at the opposite end of the scale from the extrovert, and the, 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 the difference between introverts and extroverts is is to be found not just psychologically but biologically as well. They have different types of nervous system. The introvert is less tolerant of physical stimulation, so they will tend to shy away from bold reds and oranges and yellows and prefer cooler blues and greens. There will be an attempt to organise furnishings around the edge of the room to create greater space in the middle, rather than filling that space up with coffee tables or rugs that have got um, very full and bold patterns on them. The idea being that they, they prefer more space and more distance between themselves and others. So what do you want? Start minimalism. Order and control. Or dark corners, romanticism, nooks, crannies, and something you can't quite see round the corner. What happens if you're designing for someone quite unknown to you, the non-existent personality? This kind of thing is a fascinating interior design exercise. Huge spend, but no client. It's a show home. And it's a way of trying to find a purchaser willing to spend a million quid and bringing them in, saying, yes, you can live here. This is you. This is your kind of thing. But it's a personality that doesn't exist. I mean, where do you start? You start by thinking exactly what sort of people are going to be living here. And then you project yourself into that personality. You put that hat on and you say, right, I'm that person. What would I like to see? and you kind of roll the whole thing together into a... You do, you fantasise about those people that are going to be moving in. The people I imagine buying this property are between sort of mid-30s, not married, no children, great lifestyle, a bit of surplus money, people that are interested in fashion, that buy magazines, that know about interiors, it's quite minimalistic, little touches of modern, slightly different, swanky. We're here just to give um, an, an image, something that people can walk in and think, wow, that's great, I want to have some of that. You're trying to show them different ways of putting things together. Which brings us extraordinarily neatly back to our guinea pig house. Remember, like designers who come up with show homes, I'm only guessing at the personality that lives here. And on top of that, I have other things to contend with as well. For a space with very little personalities, there's an enormous amount of architecture here, which is rather uncomfortable. There's a shape up there, the kitchen's isolated over there, doors and windows at different heights. So the crucial thing 
is to unite the whole. And this is what the colour will do. That level line will unite the room, give it a much more cosy, much more homely feel. Um, and also get over these rather odd things, like the ceiling is actually a bit on a scant. And so to work, chaps. Within our home, we have our own personal territory. Uh, this is an, an environment over which we have a degree of control and order. And therefore, we can decide on whether we want to project ourselves and how we want to project ourselves in that environment through, through the home that we wear around us as we wear our clothes. And for some of us, we want to project a particular impression to the world as a whole that we are um, perhaps creative, intelligent, thoughtful people that uh, we know uh, what the latest fashions are and we want to show them off. Or we might be a person who really doesn't care about showing off to the rest of the world. All we care about is perhaps impressing those who are close to us. And so we create an environment then which is cosy and friendly where we receive selected other people who we invite into our homes uh, who we already know well. And what we want to do with them very often is to reassure them that through our homes we're the person who they think we are. Nearly every room you go into says something very, very specific about the people that live in it. And this room has a lot to say for itself. It's about fusing the best of the old and all that's good about the new. And it's a very seductive mix for us now, for our generation, because it's accepting heritage, but it's saying that heritage isn't necessarily dowdy. Heritage can be part of daily life. And then... It's rather bizarrely, rather jazzily, combined with something like a glass coffee table, a very, very modernistic statement. Large mirrors either side of the mantelpiece, again, very, very modern. But balance is achieved always. Everything we do says something about us. Just take this bedroom. Now I seem to have inadvertently stumbled through a minute fissure in the space-time warp continuum, which means I'm now in a little used romantic bedroom in a French country chateau. Romance rules. It's rustic, it's starchy, it's a little bit well scrubbed, but it's a bit like a giggly flirt behind a lavender bush somewhere in Provence. Oh, do take me there. Or perhaps not. Yes, well, I think we can quite honestly say we've gone beyond flirting in this room. This is the lair of a vamp. It's opulent, it's indulgent, it's full of rich, shiny finishes. And every single one of the deadly sins has been catered for, from lust through to wrath. And at its centre, like some great big Edwardian luxury liner, the bed. This is high calorie decorating. I have actually copyrighted that term, so use it at your peril. Ironically, whilst most of us think that personality has to do with individuality, there is a reality at work here. There is a multi-million pound industry actually manipulating us, actually setting the agenda for the stuff that we might buy for the home. 
Okay, I mean, there'll always be individualists, uh, the ladies and gentlemen that might want black PVC on their ceilings and no stud coat hooks, but the majority of us are actually relatively happy about following fashion. And that's the fashion we see around us. You have to want it to buy it in the first place. And we don't, retailers don't just boss people around too much because it wouldn't, there wouldn't be any benefit in that. We want to know what people want, hence all the research, hence the DIY monitor, uh, colour forecasting. A lot of money is invested in that. And it's not just so we can be first and say, we told you green was coming in. It's because that's what's felt to be what people are going to want next. So I think, I think fashion, fashion, yes, it does, it does lead the way as it should. Fashion and designers do lead the way. That's their job. That's what they're there for, to open, open different doors for us. But whether we go through them, that's up to us. So how do you find your own personal style? Are you born with it? Or do you wake up one morning and think, ooh, I'm so deco? I think it's a combination of the two because your take on your style will change due to experiences, due to whatever's happening to you at the moment. But the majority of us, and that includes you, use these magazines. Don't feel embarrassed about magpie-like taking an element from here, an element from there. In fact, I think the more elements you add to the mix from as many different sources, the more personal your choice becomes. But remember, these magazines sit around on your coffee table for on average 12 months, so make sure that the cover goes with your wallpaper. As far as influences go, I think magazines have a very big influence on, on um, hope, and, and they should do, on giving inspiration and, and ideas to people. Um, I, th I think to say a magazine influences someone's personality is probably a bit, um, possibly kind of pushing the boundaries of what a magazine can do to a degree, but it should be able to trigger things in pe people's personalities so that they see something they like and kind of can either reaffirm something or give somebody inspiration. I would see it more as, as that, as a kind of, uh, of a tool for someone to actually sort of access elements of their personality. It's fair to say that television shows and the media generally have an enormous influence on the sort of designs most of us buy. But it's not hard for your personality to shine through. Simply flick through the magazines and you'll quickly spot what says you. Create a style board and this will instantly and infallibly denote what sort of person you are. No two people will ever come up with the same style board and each will say a lot about what you want and desire. See what I mean? Go on, try it at home yourself, you know you want to. You never know. You might start scaling the heights of modern minimalism or even plumbing the depths of country cottagity. I tend to put things into four groups, four main groups. So everybody's tastes will come into either the, the urban, very cutting edge group, the natural group, which is kind of things like earthy textures, um, natural fabrics and all that kind of thing. And then I think there's the classic group who like sort of period style, um, quite tasteful things, quite, you know, nothing too outrageous, but just lovely classic features and styling and colours and that kind of thing. And then I think there's the romantic lot who will go for perhaps softer colours, florals and a bit more fluffy, play around a bit more. I think I'm probably in the, probably in the urban group, I guess, with a bit of romantic fluffiness. <laughs>
Okay, so you know your own style, you know what suits you. And I'm sure that you found that by following a few of the basic design rules in this series, things are beginning to come together as a scheme. But, inevitably, things can go wrong. I am known for not getting it right every time, but I am a designer, not a psychologist. Let's hope everything's going slightly better back at the guinea pig location. And it is. So from chilly, soulless aircraft hangar to homely haven, very, very simply. And, excuse me, lashings of personality. Nothing expresses personality better than colour. It's such a subjective choice. And here, the red is warming, the red is emphatic. The red is gorgeous against the kitchen, gorgeous against the floor. But the personality here is also very, very controlled, very linear, very graphic. So elements like the picture rail to terminate the red work brilliantly to express this feeling of keeping everything in the right place. Keeping everything in the right place doesn't mean an arid environment, however. Why do we British have this obsession with storage? Why would we have such a down on clutter? Clutter is the stuff that makes us. Everything has an association to it, whether it's sparkly dancing, party shoes, pine cones, pebbles from the beach. All of these things have memories. All of these things, I believe, should be there for people to see. We're so worried about being judged by other people. Why can't we just get on and be ourselves? Because a room like this, a room that expresses personality like this, is a happy room. <laughs> 